Where are we with all this? We've got another set of talks which have just ended in a bit of a whimper. At least they're talking, they're talking in September. But is it just at the moment all political as we wait for the election cycle to get going proper? Uh Thanks very much for having me on the show. No, I don't think it is. I think that maybe expectations were too high for the discussions that just took place in Shanghai. I think the biggest issue and the key progress was that the two sides are back at the negotiating table. Uh, there is a very large agreement. There are some very substantive commitments within that agreement. And the challenge now is just how to get that over the finish line, particularly as you point out that it go, we start in the United States to go into a particularly political period uh, starting next year with the presidential election. So what do you think the biggest sticking point is? It, it seems that 95 percent of the work has probably been done, but it's always the 5 percent, which is the hardest bit to get I suppose completed. I think the biggest issue really is enforcement and that's going to be critical to the excess of the agreement overall. The United States has a view that in the agreement it should stipulate even down to the level of changes that should be made in China's legal system and reflected in Chinese law. The Chinese have protested that the United States shouldn't be giving them that level of detail and how they now find a compromise to capture these commitments in a way that they can be enforced is going to be what is really at the top of the agenda for the negotiators going forward. Uh, Deborah, this is this is David here. Is do you think that's too tall an order to ask for the Chinese? Because I can easily see the other way around it. If the Chinese ask the U.S. to put something <laughs> into legislation, I can see the U.S. Congress be up in arms. What do you think? You're absolutely right, but the thing is, in every 301 that we've had with China, and I've negotiated on three of them, in the end it always mm. came down to something like this. It really was form over substance. Mm. And the commitments have been made. My understanding from people in the administration is that they're very good commitments, although they have not yet shared the details of them. And the critical issue will be, and, and I think at the working level the negotiators will continue to meet through August in preparation for the principals meeting again in September, how these commitments can be captured in specific enough detail that they can be held, the China and the United States to the degree that the U.S. is making commitments as part of this agreement also can be held accountable. So Deborah, uh, we have these Democratic presidential candidate debates going on right now. I'm just wondering, would the Chinese, would it be worth their while to wait this out? under a new administration, would, would the conditions change drastically if we had a Democrat as a president? Well, ironically, it seems that uh, in listening to the presidential debates that many of the Democratic candidates are actually running to the right of the president. So it's not clear that it would be in China's interest to wait. Certainly one of the only issues in Washington these days that the Democrats and the Republicans agree upon is being tough on China. So I think it would be a mistake for the Chinese to think that they'll get a better deal if they wait. Deborah, just in a sort of a more holistic way, what do the Chinese like to deal with and negotiate with uh, compared to others? <laughs> Well, I think the Chinese are really very expert at negotiating. Um, they uh, are very tough and they are very focused in negotiating what is in their own national interest. They push very hard on the timelines. I think, though, in this case, there's a recognition that many of the things that the United States is asking for are actually in China's own interest. And certainly for those people in China who are looking to reform, um, and I use reform more in the U.S. sense. Certainly we've seen in China over the last 10 years a lot of reform domestically, but we haven't seen a lot of opening up to foreign firms. If China's going to continue to grow its economy, it must open key sectors to foreign firms. Understandably, when you have an economy the size that China is, there are going to be domestic interests, many powerful domestic interests that may be opposed to some of that competition and market opening. But this is a decision that here in China at the top levels they need to make if they want to continue with economic growth, if they want to have a strong economy, they must open up to foreign competition. We've, we've talked about some of the low-hanging fruit to your point, uh, one of which that keeps coming up 
um, up until uh, until now is, is is just the upping of, of agricultural purchases in uh, of American farmers, which I would imagine then plays into the 2020 elections because that is of course part of the base. Uh, is is that the lowest hanging fruit? And if if that gets done, what do you think is next, Deborah? Well, I think there are many different aspects to this agreement. That is really on the margins of the overall agreement. Uh, and that really was one of the key indicators of whether the talks were going to go forward or not. At the G20, and it's a dispute over what was actually agreed to, but certainly the impression that the United States had, and certainly the president had, is that China was going to continue to move agricultural products. Uh, purchase agricultural products, which is one of President Trump's priorities. One of President Xi's priorities was to see progress on Huawei. Although nothing like that was announced coming out of this meeting of the principals in Shanghai, certainly you would have the view that if China has now announced it's moving forward on the agricultural products, there's probably been some movement or indication given of movement about approving companies uh, to be able to continue some sales to Huawei. On the commitments, we understand a lot of commitments have been made, and we can hear even uh, the premier recently made announcements about moving up the timetable on some of the commitments of lifting equity restrictions on financial firms. That, again, is one of the low-hanging fruit. There's been discussion about that for many, many years. China's now finally taking action on that. We hope to see also much broader reforms, some of the structural reforms in dealing with the state-owned enterprises, um, additional sectors being opened up for foreign competition and so on.